questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a conversation between a male clerk in a hire company and a woman customer. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this example will be played first. Hello, welcome to Harry's Hire Company. How can I help you? Oh, hi. Yes, I've come in to find out about renting stuff for a twenty-first birthday party. Yes, of course. The customer says she wants to rent equipment for a birthday party, so birthday party has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello, welcome to Harry's Hire Company. How can I help you? Oh hi, yes, I've come in to find out about renting stuff for a twenty-first birthday party. Yes, of course. First of all, what date is the party? It's next Saturday. That was the closest we could get to the actual birthday, which is the twenty-second of November. Gosh, it's hard to believe it was twenty-one years ago. Seems like yesterday. So the eighteenth of November. No, sorry, I meant the following Saturday, the twenty-fifth. Okay, we have just about everything here: tableware, marquees, you name it. We rent it. What size of a venter we talking about here? Yes, that's a good question. We were planning to have about forty people, but you know how these things grow, and it went up to sixty at one stage. Um, I think it's back to fifty-five now. Yes, that's right. It was all getting a bit out of hand. Okay. And what kind of catering and entertainment are you having? We can help with entertainment hire too. You know, if you need microphones or a sound system. Oh, that's good. We've booked a catering company, and they're providing a meal. It's nothing elaborate; just finger food snacks, and then a simple buffet meal. So we'll need all the usual dinner plates and bowls. I suppose five dozen of everything. Oh, and knives and forks too. Five dozen sets. We won't need any cooking equipment because the caterers will do that, and they're providing tea and coffee as well. I see. And do you need any tables or chairs? Well, not tables because we wouldn't have room for them. But I suppose some extra chairs might come in handy. What type do you have? Come over here, and I'll show you. We have a couple of different kinds. We do have the folding wooden ones, like these. But the most popular ones are just those stackable plastic garden chairs. We rent a lot of those. Yes, the plastic ones look great. Maybe forty of those. Okay, I'm making a list here as we speak. Was there anything else? Oh, do you want small or medium glasses? People generally want both sizes. Yeah, better get both kinds. Four dozen of each. Um, and what else? The caterers are supplying a punch bowl, so that's okay. Oh, I know. What about six ice buckets for keeping the drinks cold? We're providing all the drinks because I have a friend who's helping us with that. Um, I suppose this is going to get very expensive. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten.
listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, let's talk about our packages and rental deals. Firstly, what day do you want to collect the equipment? Oh, I'm not sure. Does that make a difference to the price? Well, the weekend package deal is to pick up after 5pm on Friday and drop off before 10am on Monday. That will be $1,600 plus tax. If you want to save a bit of money, you can collect the equipment on the day of the party before 5pm and drop off on the Monday before 10am, and that will be $1,350 plus tax. That's called the same day package. Your party numbers come between our small and medium price packages, I'm afraid. So in fact, you could rent a few extra of everything for the same price. I see. Well, we're not inviting more guests. I think we have quite enough already. Um, are there any other hidden charges with those packages? No, not really. But if you want us to drop off and pick up at your house, there is an extra home delivery charge of $50, provided you live within 10 kilometres of here. Oh, and if you want to take out breakage insurance, that's a $60 flat fee. Otherwise, you pay for every item you break at the replacement cost. Wow, so how much is that then? I bet that soon adds up. Well, yes, it does a bit. Let's see. Tableware is $3.55 a piece, small glasses are $3.50, and medium glasses are $4.40. Oh, and if you break a chair, they're expensive. $15 each. And you'll be surprised what happens when the party gets going. Yes, insurance sounds like a good idea. And I think I'll take the weekend package deal, thanks. It's much more convenient, isn't it? And not much more expensive. OK, so let's take a few details then. Your name? Oh, it's Susan Millins. Um, is that Miller? No, it's M-I-L-L-I-N-S. Right, and your address, please? 28B Sandstone Close, Martinsboro. And just to confirm the order... The medium-sized party weekend package with breakage insurance. And did you want to collect this yourself? Yes, thank you. I do live within 10Ks, but I don't want to pay any extra charges. I'll get my son to help me. OK. We'll need an emergency contact number, just in case anything goes wrong. Oh, and credit card details, of course. Oh, yes, of course. The phone number is 084-398-7695. OK, thank you. And now the credit card. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a man giving an orientation talk to new holiday makers at the Solaris Hotel and Holiday Village. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully to the orientation talk and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning everyone and welcome to your first morning here at the Solaris Hotel and Holiday Village. This little orientation talk this morning will just give you an idea of what to find and expect around the grounds. Let's begin by looking at meals. We have three different restaurants and you are at liberty to eat at any of them. They are the Harvest Restaurant, the Dean Restaurant and the Mekong Restaurant. Let's begin with breakfast. Breakfast is only served in the Harvest Restaurant. The other two restaurants are only open for lunch and dinner. 
Breakfast is served between 6.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. seven days a week. There are English, American and Continental style breakfasts on offer. For lunch and dinner all the restaurants have the same opening hours to make things easier for you. Lunch is served from 12 noon to 2.30 p.m. and dinner is served from 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. The menus are the same for lunch and dinner though look at the blackboards displayed in the restaurants for any specials that they are serving for any particular meal. The style of food is different in each of the restaurants. The harvest serves traditional English food though with plenty of the foreign dishes which are popular in the UK such as curry and spaghetti. The Dean specialises in fish and seafood and the Mekong offers you a selection of dishes from the Far East. Not just from Vietnam as the name suggests but Chinese, Thai, Malay and others. You don't have to pay in any of the restaurants unless an extra supplement is needed for some of the specials. All soft drinks are also free though we charge for alcoholic drinks. You can choose to pay any bill that you may incur at the end of the meal itself or you can put it on your main bill which you can pay when you leave at the end of your holiday. There is also a bar menu in the main bar which serves pretty good pub food and if you have any late night munchies there is a takeaway open until 2.30 a.m. which sells fast food. Good for those of you who are returning in the early hours from a disco or club. You now have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the orientation talk and answer questions 16 to 20. Now let's look at some of the things that you can do here during your stay with us. Of course we have our main beach which is popular with everyone. There is also an adult beach which is prohibited to anyone less than 17 years of age. This allows those of you without children to get some peace and quiet on the beach. The main beach has two lifeguards on duty from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The adult beach has no lifeguards. If you don't like sand and salt we have a decked area in front of the Harvest restaurant with our 25 meter swimming pool. You can lie here on a sun lounger and swim in the pool with no sand to bother you. There are steps from the pool area to the beach so you can go between the two but if you're coming up from the beach please walk through the foot pool so that the sand gets washed off and doesn't lie around the pool area. There are also fresh water showers available on the beach and in the pool area. As for sports we have eight tennis courts and three squash courts which can be booked at any time. 
There is a fully equipped gym with staff on duty to help you. No one under 18 years of age may use the gym though. We also have six full-sized snooker tables and five pool tables in the games room adjoining the bar. There is no charge for use of any of these facilities though there is a small charge if you need to hire any sports gear. Again you can pay immediately or put the charges on your main bill. There are also water skiing and jet skis available but there are charges for these. Go to the water sports office for details. All the water sports such as snorkeling inflatables and pedalos are free. Ask for all details again at the water sports office. There is a library in the hotel which supplies books, magazines and newspapers. It has certain terms and conditions of use which you would be able to find on the notice board in the library. We also have two cinemas which show three different films every day. The showings are in the afternoons at 2 p.m., the early evening at 5.30 p.m. and at night at 8.30 p.m. The afternoon and early evening showings always have a film for kids. Children under the age of 16 are not permitted to attend the 8.30 presentations. Well, that's all for now. Are there any questions? That is the end of section 2. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear four students discussing their geography project. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi Alison, how are you? Hi Tony, I'm good. Are the other two here yet? Not yet. Oh, here they are now. Hi Greg, hi Sophie. Hi Tony, hi Alison. Hi guys, are we late? Not at all. Well, let's get down to it right away. As you know, we're talking about our geography project today and our task is to survey an area to see whether it would be suitable for a new supermarket. Alison, you told me yesterday that you had an idea of how to start. Yes, well the first thing is that we'll have to choose the actual site that we wish to survey. Once that's done, we'll need to do certain preparation work. So, does anyone have any idea of a suitable site to survey? Sophie, you're good at this. Thanks, Greg. I've got some ideas. There is a farmer's field on Castle Road, just after the road leaves town and goes over the bridge. That could be a good place. Another possible site I found was in the town centre, at the old cigarette factory. Finally, there's a possible site at the airport. Here are some notes I made for everyone. How's that, Greg? Excellent. I like the one at the cigarette factory. That'll be great for people to go to without having to travel too far. 
I also think that the town council would provide grants to help develop that site, as it's been abandoned for a long time. That's true, Greg. But if you look at Sophie's notes, it says that the size of the site is limited. Not that many people will go on foot, and while there'll be enough room for the actual supermarket building, there'll be no room for a car park. That's a good point, Alison. The potential cost of the site will be a lot higher, too, as it's in the town centre. It's just a project, though. We won't actually need to buy a site. No, but doing costs in the project will all be part of how we're assessed. We will need to look at all start-up costs as well as income forecasts for the first 10 years of operation. OK, I see that it's important. I like the idea of the site by the river. It shouldn't be too expensive and the site near the edge of the town would be good for people to get to. There's the town ring road that goes nearby the site as well. Yes. However, the problem I see with that site is that it's too close to the river. We've had years with lots of rain recently and the river's been known to burst its banks. There would maybe have to be a great deal of protection building to be done. I suppose that would be something our survey would address. In fact, that might be something extra for us to explore that we wouldn't normally have the opportunity to study. It could work in our favour. And now the airport site? It seems there's nothing particularly challenging about that site. The land wouldn't be too expensive and there's plenty of road access because of the people going to the airport. Actually, I heard airport sites can be quite expensive. Yes, and although there is plenty of road access, the airport is not actually that close to the town. It's not that convenient. You now have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 26 to 30. So I think we all agree on the Castle Road site next to the river. So, Sophie, what's next? We really need to decide who does what. There are a number of jobs to be done before we actually get to go to the field and survey it. If we can get everything done quickly, we can do the survey at the weekend. So, what's the first thing? We need to get authorisation from the farmer to be on his land. If we can't do that, there's no point in starting to gather any information. I can do that. I'll nip down to the town surveyor's office and find the name and address of the owner. I'll go straight away and talk to him or her. Thanks, Alison. Now, one of the important early things is to find out whether there are any other development plans scheduled for that specific area or in any other area that would affect what we're planning. I can try and do that, but I'm not sure what the procedure is. It's easy, Greg. You just go down to the surveyor's office again and ask for all proposed plans for that postcode. I can text you the postcode later. Thanks, Tony. That's my job organised then. Now, when we start to survey the field, we'll need certain equipment. You asked about equipment, didn't you, Alison? I spoke to Professor Johnson yesterday and we can borrow all the necessary equipment from the department. I'll check that the, all the equipment is free at the weekend. Good. Anything else? Yes, Professor Johnson also told me that we have to pay a £200 deposit for the equipment. I don't have that kind of money. I can pay the deposit as long as I get it back. My parents have just put some money in the bank from a job I did for the summer. I can get it from the bank when we need it. It should only be for two days, Tony. We can get everything done in that time. OK, I'll pay the deposit and pick up the equipment from the department. Don't get it just yet. We have to get the authorisation to be on the land first. OK. So, if we can get all these jobs done over the next three days, we can meet again on Thursday. If all is OK, we could get the equipment on Friday and survey the field at the weekend. Good. Well, thanks everyone. I'd better be off. Bye. Bye. Bye.
That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a lecture about the Great Barrier Reef. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 33. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 33. Despite its name, the Great Barrier Reef isn't just one large coral reef. Rather, it's a system of coral reefs that stretches along the east coast of Australia, covering an area of around 300,000 square kilometres. The Great Barrier Reef is composed of approximately 3,000 individual reefs, which range in size from one hectare to more than 10,000 hectares each. In addition, around 600 islands are scattered throughout the area, particularly at the northern and southern ends. The reefs themselves are composed of over 400 different kinds of coral, the largest variety of corals found anywhere in the world. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 34 to 40 on page 205. Now listen carefully and answer questions 34 to 40. Thousands of species of sea animals live in and around the reefs. Altogether, approximately 1,500 species of fish inhabit the reef area, including a number of different kinds of sharks. One of the more interesting mollusks to be found in the reefs is the giant clam. This huge shellfish can live for more than 100 years and can weigh as much as 200 kilos. Sea mammals abound in the area, which serves as a breeding ground for certain types of whales, many of which are endangered. Over 200 species of sea and shorebirds feed, roost or nest among the reefs and islands. Many types of reptiles can also be found living among and near the reefs. Saltwater crocodiles, for example, inhabit the marshes along coastal areas. Amphibians include at least seven species of frogs inhabiting the islands of the reef. Unfortunately, this wondrous area of the world is threatened by climate change. Rising sea temperatures have led to an effect called coral bleaching, that is, large numbers of corals dying off, especially in the shallower areas of the reef. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority is attempting to find effective ways to deal with this issue that threatens the reef. One proposed solution involves shading the reef in certain areas to help keep the surrounding water temperatures down. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Hello again, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you for your IELTS preparation. If you not subscribed yet, I encourage you to do so and press the bell icon to get latest uploaded into your inbox. We will bring you many more useful videos and tips for IELTS preparation directly from the community of ESOL teachers and retired IELTS examiners. I wish you good luck for your IELTS exam.